Welcome aboard. It's time to grab your board and catch a wave as we ride along and surf the sales pipeline with Matt Hines from Hines Marketing. How we doing, Paul? Oh, it's one of those crazy days. It's coming up to the holidays and hard to get people on the phone and all sorts of crazy stuff. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you done with your shopping? Is everything all, all ready to roll? <laughs> Am I done with my shopping? I'll be out there Saturday night at midnight trying to get those last-minute things here. Yeah, we're, I, so I am thankfully, uh, we're doing today's sales pipeline radio from the uh, home office here in Redmond, Washington. And just about an hour ago, someone came in the, came in and was carrying a bag and says, uh, hey, you know what? Never too early to start Christmas shopping. Get <laughs> right well, I think because it, for this year it falls, Christmas falls on a Sunday, I think we all have this illusion that somehow we have the, a weekend more to shop. And it's coming up pretty quick here. It is coming up quick, but you know, hopefully, no matter where you're calling in or you're listening in, if you're listening to Sales Pipeline Radio today live, thank you very much for joining us before the holiday. If you're listening to this on the podcast, hopefully, you have enjoyed a nice holiday with your family. You're in the midst of a nice holiday week. It's kind of interesting this year. You got the uh, Christmas and New Year's uh, are both in are on Sundays, and uh, you've got uh, Hanukkah that is right in that same week. Uh, yeah. It's amazing how everything's kind of lined up this year. So, if you're about to enjoy, if you are enjoying, or if you have enjoyed a, 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 a end of two. 2016. I hope that hope you're taking time to relax, rack, to relax and enjoy yourself. And what I wanted to talk about today is actually uh, something that's near and dear to my heart is just sort of the ongoing opportunity to learn and continue to sort of make ourselves better. Uh, I don't read nearly as many books as I wish I had time for. I spend an awful lot of time, you know, reading blog posts and magazines and whatnot. But you know, most years I get to this time of year and I, I publish a list of my my favorite books from the year. Uh, most of these tend to be sort of business books. Most of these are, are somewhat related to business and marketing. Uh, but my list this year is is a little varied. You're going to hear a little bit of that. And so, Paul, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see if we can actually get through this list. Every time I've got like a top ten list of things I want to cover, <laughs> we'll get through three. And and because we talk too much about it, and so exactly. we're really try. All right, let's see if we can do this. We can we get through five before the commercial break? Let's and see if we can get five done. These are these are books that you recommend or that you've read or. No, or... well, these, these are all books that I've read. So these are books I've read in 2016. Some of them were written before this year. One of them was written in the 80s, and it's I was a reread for me, but it's on the list anyway because it's all so right. important. But these are all books that I've read that I thought I uh, have that have value uh, potentially for, for others as well. I got my pen out. I'm ready to go. All right, so so book number one is called Persuasion, not Persuasion, mm. Persuasion, a revolutionary way to influence and pers- persuade. And it was written by Robert Cialdini, and you may uh, recognize the name. He wrote the book Influence, which is absolutely a classic, just in terms of the psychology and the research behind how uh, we actually build influence. What I like about Persuasion, it's it's a sequel to Influence, but it's really a prequel, and that it really gets into the science of how we condition people to be influenced how do you set the stage to be influenced it is such an important concept when you're in sales and marketing in particular when you're thinking about setting the stage for the sales setting the stage for bringing up your product and service you know we talk a lot on sales pipeline radio and you see a lot of this through a lot of my own content talking about you know the um you know, selling the hole, not the drill. Talking about outcomes before you get to your product or solution. Spending as long as you can talking about the customer's interest and outcome before you bring up your own product and solution and how that fits in. So I think the idea of persuasion, of preconditioning, of establishing the foundation of need, it has has been is is has been covered ground. But never have I seen the level of research and insights and depth as as I have in persuasion. So that's number one. I definitely recommend. Uh, checking that one. When I was a young pup and uh, right out of college, I took a job selling copiers, and they trained us over and over again on the pitch. And they put us on the, gave us a car and gave us a little cart, and we took our little copier and we went up and down, hall to hall, door to door, room to room, business to business. And I remember one time I walked in. This is sort of what you're talking about. And I walked in. I was so keen on getting that whole pitch out before i even listened to what their need was you know hi how are you i'm paul robertson blah, 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 blah. and i got i walked in the door and the guy said would you just shut up for a minute i we need a copy right now and we'll take it i, I there was no there was no persuasion i just was uh, in a rush to any opening i could to start pitching 
Yeah, and, and, and you know, every once in a while you'll get that sort of qualified, ready-to-buy prospect. But most right. of the time, you know, where people are busy, they're not in the mindset. You really do have to take the time to establish need. And oftentimes three steps are faster than one to get to where you want to go. If you right. take the time to build that persuasion into the process, you're much more likely to get a qualified, motivated prospect. So yeah. book, book number one to keep us going is persuasion. Definitely encourage you to check that out. Uh, I will have a list of all of these that we can put in the call notes and a list Good. with links to Amazon of all these books, you know, on our blog at HeinzMarketing.com. As well, so book number two is humbly titled "The Only Sales Guide You'll Ever Need," <laughs> uh, written by someone by the name of Anthony Ian Narino. If you are in sales and you don't know Anthony, you definitely need to read his stuff. He is consistently one of the best sales bloggers, I believe, working in the business. Uh, there's a there were a lot of great sales books this year. There's a couple more that you'll see on the list a little further on. But but I know um, right away that that book can't be true because they also have to have a copy of the Modern Marketer's Field Guide in their back pocket. True, but I, that's true. But I think if a fucking field marketer's field guide and sales guide, then maybe those can go hand in hand. Okay, all right. Uh, I mean, this is this is clearly a table stakes book. Very quickly, I think you know, even as it was published, became uh, something that needs to be in everyone's sales library. And if there is just one book you add, uh, this might be it. I, I think you know, for a long time, I've talked about the Challenger Sales being one of the most important sales books in the last five plus years. I think Daniel Pink's uh, "To Sell Is Human" might be the best lay person's sales book i love uh, his I stuff anyway daniel pink probably daniel pink does a bunch of stuff it's fascinating his, to read his stuff is amazing and the book to sell is human like if you're not in sales but want to understand how sales should work it's a great book if you're somewhere in the middle or if you want to challenge yourself as a non-sales person or if you need a refresher on the basics uh anthony is such a good writer he's such a good presenter it's it's easy to read it's fun to read he's got a great personality that comes through in his writing so the only sales guide you'll ever need, again, humbly titled, but, um, you know, it's it's appropriate given the quality of the content. I don't want to knock us off point here again, but I just have to ask you a quick point. Are we still salespeople or are we, have we all turned into consultative consultants and, you know, and guides and everything? I mean, is there still some validity to just the basic principles of how to qualify and close a lead? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, you, you, I don't care what you call it. I think that, the, you know, good salespeople have always been somewhat consultative. Good salespeople have always spent time to understand their customers. They've always spent time building the need. I mean, you see, you know, some of the best street sellers. There's a guy in New York City that sits on a bench <laughs> and uh, peels potatoes for a living, and he sells he sells vegetable peelers. And he, he doesn't just tell you why you need it. He shows you why you need yeah. it, right? And I think the more of us that do that in any sales capacity, that can build a case that's not about us but about, you know, the people we're trying to influence and sell. That's that's it. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's obviously way more complicated to get into it. All right, so book number one, persuasion. Book number two, the only sales guide you ever need. Book number three on my list is called The Great Beanie Baby Bubble. <laughs> Mass Delusion and the Dark Side of Cute by Zach okay. Bissonette. And so, so this is on there – for a couple of reasons. One, like if you if you lived through the Beanie Baby bubble, if you if you even if you weren't participating in it, and I was not. I was I, at the time. I was I was still uh, you know I was a big baseball card guy, so Me too. I was you know very much more on the other side. But you would see them at the same shows. You go to collectible shows and yeah. you see these Beanie Babies that were like you know in pristine little boxes. This is a great book for a couple of reasons. One, you know, if you want to know what differentiates a trend from a fad, you know, how you can tell if something's going to be sustainable, repeatable, or something that's not going to have staying power. Some really good business lessons uh, in this book. Uh, it's a fun read if you live through that just to kind of – I had no idea how cultish this thing was. I had no idea. Um, I remember the, it. I, it was unique, big. Yeah, yeah I mean – unique personality of the guy that founded it who quite frankly is still in the business i mean you still see you know the the company's uh stuff in in, in toy store just nothing that quite any kind of close got the level of the beanie babies no that and pet rocks but anyway <laughs> <laughs> rocks all right one more before i know we gotta, you gotta jump, jump into a commercial here pretty quickly so uh, number four on the list is called high profit prospecting powerful strategies to find the best leads and drive breakthrough sales results by Mark Hunter. This might be one of the most important, you know, books on prospecting written uh, in the last couple of years. I mean, activity and volume just isn't enough. This this book gets into new trends research, a real proven framework for you know developing habits around sales pipeline mm. building. And I think if that is a need for you as a business, if you've got a sales team that really needs to establish those habits, great resource for them to to, to check out here. Well, that's what we talked about in the last show, and I, I hope you'll talk about it in the new year more. This idea that it is is more important to have qualified leads than a quantity of leads. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's and, and that's a big part of what this book talks about. I mean, like, look, prospecting is still 
a little bit of a numbers game. You still have to put in the time. Sure. You have to put in uh, the work and, and do that on a consistent basis. But this book is not just about being on the phone as much as possible. It's about bringing the right approach to that work as well. But what I like about this book, it really does get into the habits. It gets into the mindset. It gets into you know sustaining those habits in that volume over a period of time, um, keeping yourself like high energy, highly active. It's it's just a critical part. And, and you're right, Paul. The approach is an important part of this. Um, but um, well, it's what we know. learned in computer programming. They used to say years ago, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So many times, all we're trying to do is generate garbage, and that the, the illusion of activity, as I used to call it, the feeling that something's happening just because people are sending in the lead cards or whatever in the old days. But it was all just to get the beanie baby, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so bring it back. That's right. All right, real quick before we get to commercial, then uh, I'm going to get number five just so we get halfway through. All right. Number five is another sales book called More Sales, Less Time, Surprisingly Simple Strategies for Today's Crazy Busy Sellers. It's written by Jill Conrath, and every she's one great. of her books she's is great. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and she's covered, a, she's, she's covered the crazy busy buyer in years past uh, with her book, especially with the book Snap Selling. But she's now addressing the problem every single sales rep has, which is how to make the best use of their time to increase active selling time, external impact, and results. And th- I think this may be – she's all of her books are great. This may be her best book yet. It literally just came out about a month ago. Hmm. It is a very quick read. I inc- pick up a copy, read it on your next flight. You'll fly through it. Some great reminders, some great new ideas, more sales, less time. Great didn't, succinct title as well. Didn't she work with there. Oracle? Or something? She's been on one of her other shows, I don't remember, a couple of times. And doesn't, didn't she work with Oracle or something? She does a lot with social selling or am I? She's done a lot with social selling. Uh, she's just a really well round. I mean, she's, she's, you know, she spent decades as a sales leader and sales manager herself and just, mm-hmm. uh, just one of the best thinkers and speakers on the circuit today. So more sales, less time. I encourage you to check that out. All right. We're halfway through, Paul. We got five down. Wow. We got five to go All on right. our list of the 10 uh my 10 favorite books of 2016 we'll write you right back after the commercial we'll get to the next five preview what we got coming up in the early part of 2017 uh thanks for listening to sales pipeline radio in a world where the speed of innovation and change in b2b marketing has never been greater the only thing bigger is the need for clarity or a blueprint for a guide to what's really working and how to apply it specifically to increase sales pipeline growth, velocity, and conversion. That's what you'll find in the Modern Marketer's Field Guide. Download it free at HeinzMarketing.com. Whether you're producing a seminar series, user's conference, lunch and learn, or exhibiting at a trade show, Validar has a solution. From capturing leads at trade shows to managing on-site registration, tracking session attendance, gathering information, and providing sponsors lead retrieval, we have a full suite of solutions for you. Since 2005, Validar has been turning corporate events and trade shows into better business. Call 888-784-2929 or visit us at Validar.com. All right, we're back halfway through the list of books that you should add to your library in 2017 with Matt Hines. Your library into your Kindle, whatever makes sense for you to read these. Uh, <laughs> I'm dating yeah, these myself. Are, this, is a, this is a list that, as you can tell, is eclectic. We've gone from sales, uh, we've gone into persuasion, uh, we've gone into Beanie Babies. <laughs> it's going to get it's going to get a little more varied before we wrap up at the okay. end of the list. So uh, definitely stick with us here. Um, Thanks again for joining us, Sales Python Radio. We've got one more episode left in 2016. Then we're going to be heading into 2017 with a whole new set of guests. Actually, uh, we're going to be dark next week because we're off for the week between Christmas and New Year's. So we're going to right. we'll have a repeat or something. But we're we'll going to be dark. We'll do a for repeat next week. next week. All right. Well, good. Well, thanks very much. Uh, you know, for joining us. Uh, definitely check out the podcast if you haven't yet. We're on Google Play and the iTunes Store. You can always catch us live every Thursday at 2:30 Eastern, 11:30 Pacific. We've got some great guests coming up at the beginning of the year. Uh, we got. Don Gregory, who runs a company called On Target Consulting, who is an expert in go-to-market strategy and customer research. We talked about how the what are some of the best ways in, in the modern world to, uh, to capture customer insight, especially with a social media audience that we have access to. Grant Cardone, who is uh, a famous and infamous uh, sales uh, consultant, going to learn a lot of great stuff from him. We got some great people in the field. We are going to start to feature more CMOs, VPs of marketing that we've got lined up, including the vice president of marketing for Box, as well as many others uh, that we'll be featuring into January and February on Sales Pipeline Radio. Box so is a sure. fascinating company. I can't wait to hear that. They really uh, have. A- she's a, she's great. She's a great. She's a great speaker. She's doing some amazing things over there. They're growing like crazy. So uh, well, we got to get Joe Conrath. Now that you bring her up, we got to get Joe Conrath on here too. 
We do need to get Jill on. Yeah, no, I think, um, and I know we've, we've tried a couple of times, and I know the last couple of times I tried, you know, she was uh, super busy with her book. Um, so, drop uh, drop you know, my name. She's on a she's on a first name basis with me here. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, let's get, through, let's get back to the list. We're no, she's not. But it, <laughs> uh, let's get to number six. Number six on the list is called The One True Barbecue, Fire, mm. Smoke, and the Pitmasters Who Cook the Whole Hog. <laughs> What? Yeah, it's, this is number six. I, I didn't say these are all business books. This is, <laughs> and, and I'll give away the punchline up front. According to the author, uh, uh, Reen F- Fertel, the, the one true barbecue is three things. It is one, whole hog, two, cooked over wood, uh, and three, it's in a masonry pit. Hmm. So, okay. so these are difficult things for the amateur barbecuer I to say. replicate at home. Yeah. Um, but if you're interested in barbecue, if you're interested in something that, quite frankly, gets into the history and anthropology uh, of the Carolinas, uh, if you like just good storytelling, uh, this is just a really fun book. And the Carolinas, uh, they it. use pork barbecue, I'm told. They don't use beef barbecue. It's all pork. No, no, no. And, and not only that, not, and, and, and so depending on the part of the Carolinas you're in, I mean, some people swear that it's only whole hog versus, you know, using the pork shoulder. They all have, all throughout the Carolinas, they have different ideas of what kind of sauce you should be using. Yes, right, whether it's tomato-based or something else. And yeah, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, and, and they get into that. And I mean, really, I mean, it's, it's not just preferences. I mean, people that say, like, you know, in East Carolina, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's a very much more vinegar. In South Carolina, it's a really mustard-based. And then it's not preferences. They say, no, this is the only way to do it. Yeah, like, right. Everyone else is not right. Like, you, can't, you can't do just shoulder. You can't do charcoal. <laughs> you can't do, you know, whatever the flavor of the sauce is. They're just very serious about this. Now, how does this uh, relate to sales, or is this just fun? This is the No, break. it doesn't relate to sales at all. I, I try to figure out, you know, how it might relate to sales, and, may, and, and honestly, I think, uh, I don't know. I'm not even going to try. So you got to go in whole hog. If whatever you do in the new year, go in whole hog, not halfway. Oh, there you go. That 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 works. Good. Uh, all right. So the, number seven on the list is called Shoe Dog. Um, and it is uh, the memoir uh, from Phil Knight. And, you know, I've read a lot of books written by people that have run big, successful businesses, founders, CEOs. And a lot of them tend to be, uh, you know, kind of like ego-driven, like, look how great I did kind of books. And but how easy it was. Out. Gee, I just started a game up with an idea. I got found some money, and 20 years later, I'm a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just that easy, right? So what I love about this book is it. this does not sugarcoat what growing a business is like. I mean, I've been doing this, you know, you know with growing my business for eight years, and there were a lot of things in Phil's story that definitely resonate. I mean, he's, the book starts when he has the idea of creating a shoe business, and it ends right before the IPO. And in between, he talks about. I mean, you run out of you'd run out of you'd run out of fingers counting the number of times in the book that he almost didn't make it, almost hmm. ran out of money, almost went out of business. You know, it was just kind of trying to figure out how to keep going. He it is a very humble, uh, very transparent account of what most entrepreneurs know is the real story of entrepreneurship. Yeah, uh, and that's what separated it for me is is just how how much it resonated in many cases, but also just how real it was. And that's so, some of these books aren't real. They're, they get a ghostwriter, and it's just all a fairy tale, and it's so easy, and it was easy, and and you can do it too. And you feel like an idiot after you read it, like, gee, it's so simple. Why can't I do it? It's never that easy. It's never that easy. You know, the um, the, the path to success, there is no elevator. you got to take the stairs. Yeah. Very <laughs> oh, I like that. That's yeah. my motto for the new year. No elevator. Got to take the stairs. Yeah, I, I, I can't take credit for that. I, and I, but I wish I could give credit to who it came from. I read it somewhere, and that person didn't make it up either. And I'd, no <laughs> one's, I, I haven't been able to find the source. So if someone listening, either live or in the podcast, can Send find us. the source, yeah. please let me know. Please. Um, All right, what so do we anyway, have to? So seven. Number seven is Shoe Dog. Shoot Number eight is a book called The Goal, uh, written by Eli Goldrad. And if, if this is a book many people may be familiar with. It was written in 1984, and it, it really sort of covers uh, what Eli calls the theory of constraints. And so the idea is there is something, there is one thing in your business that is keeping you from growing, mm-hmm. that when you can alleviate that, it will help everything else work more efficiently. It's one of the best business books I have ever read. Um, and if you're familiar with the book's like Five Dysfunctions of a Team. It's kind of like a business fiction type book. You'll definitely recognize the format. But uh, this is a book that I think is worth rereading on a periodic basis. Uh, what, what if the to problem remind is uh, ourselves about that theory of constraints and how important that is to consider in our businesses? What if the constraint is me? <laughs> sometimes we need. Sometimes the answers we need aren't the answers we want. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. Uh, and that sometimes is certainly the case. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, this is the one that 
I, I reread it this year. I, I read it for the first time years ago. Uh, it's just such a good book. I just had to put it back on the list. Number eight. Right, we're down to the last two. Uh, number nine for me was Spinach in Your Boss's Teeth, Essential Etiquette for Professional Success. Yeah, you had her on. That was fascinating. What, yeah. what a oh, yeah, clever Arden idea. Cle- Arden Kleiss uh, was on uh, a few weeks ago, and you can definitely, if you haven't heard her episode, find it in the podcast. Find it on salespipelineradio.com. This book's a differentiator. I mean, like, you know, we're living in a world where I feel like manners, mannerisms, habits – uh, some of those are really lost, and, and and I think that if if you can pick some of those back up, it really does differentiate you in today's business world. You so this, stand this out. Not- you stand out if you've got that, and and if you just want to be one of the the slobs that doesn't, you know, somehow we think we can get away with it. I certainly fall habit to that. I don't dress like I used to. I don't, uh, you know, use all the courtesies and that I probably do. We're in a fast paced world. Just cut to the bottom line. But those that do, as she pointed out, really do stand out. Well, and there's a balance point in all of this, right? I mean, I think gone are the days when, you know, men, you know, were wearing sort of suits and ties every day to work. And right. for many of us, it's like, well, thank goodness, you right. know. Uh, it, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm I'm mostly just internal meetings today. I'm wearing, you know, just a Heinz Marketing sweatshirt and jeans and comfortable shoes. You always see me. Yeah, I've got my baseball cap and uh, uh, T-shirts on here or something. But Yeah, I mean, it's, but, I, but I think this is more than just what you wear, right? I and mean, this is more than just what might be in your teeth. It's how do you follow up? Uh, you know, where do you follow up? Do you do handwritten notes? Uh, yeah. How do you uh, respect people's time when you don't have a relationship yet? I mean, this book covers so much ground. Uh, it, it, it feels like common sense, but if it's common sense, it ain't too common from what yeah. I see out in the market. You know, in five so, years of uh, producing these shows, we, we do about 20 of them here on the network, I've only ever had two guests that sent us a handwritten thank you, and I've kept really? them. And, yeah. and I thought to myself, why am I keeping these? But I was so touched that they took the time to write and mail us a thank you. No question. No question. It makes a big difference. So, yeah, number nine on my list uh, of my favorite books for 2016 is definitely Spinach in Your Boss's Teeth. And last but not least, certainly not least, number 10 on my list is a book called Resilience, hard Wisdom for Fighting or for Living a Better Life. And it's written by Eric Greetens who is a former SEAL himself. And this this book is published as a set of letters that he wrote to a good friend who also was a former SEAL and was sort of just struggling with life. And it's it's extremely well written. It pulls deeply from uh, ancient literature and lessons about what resilience means, how it can be applied to our lives, how we can make ourselves better, personally, professionally, all points in between. This this was the last book I read this year. I mean, you know, the, the last book that I finished this year, and it might be my favorite of the whole bunch just because of, I don't know, it's, it's just had so many great words of wisdom. It summarized so much, so many ancient texts that I have not had a chance to, to sit down and read directly. And so it's great to get some of the highlights of those as well and just uh, kind of a great way to finish the quote-unquote reading year for me was this this great book called Resilience. Well, and to which I'll only add, you still got to get the Modern Marketer's Field Guide in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'm not going to sell my own books, Paul, you might as well do it for me. I appreciate that. Uh, well, you know, I know we're out of time here, so, you know, the um, – I won't run through the whole list again. If you'd like to get the entire list, uh, we have it up at HeinzMarketing.com. We'll put it in the notes uh, on the podcast as well. Uh, but definitely, look, I think if nothing else, I mean, you notice some some oddballs in here, some barbecue, some yeah. baby babies, some spinach. Look, the, the, the key here is just to read, right? If you're That's not it. reading every, every day, if you're not reading, not learning and you know, you know, know, getting better on a regular basis, I believe you're falling behind. So no matter where you read, no matter what you read, uh, just keep learning. Keep being curious. I'm with you. All right, man. Well, hey, appreciate everyone's time. I know next week we're going to be off, and we've got the uh, got the holidays coming up. Really appreciate everyone. We've, we're finishing our first full year of Sales Pipeline. Radio. I could not be happier with what we've been able to do. Thank you so much. I'm humbled by the amazing people that are listening to this, both live and on the podcast on a regular, regular basis. Because so. it's real. We're talking real here. This is real, man. So, Paul, thank you for all the great work you do. Jim Obermeyer, who is our, uh, I don't know what we call him, our producer, our overlord. I don't know what we call him, but he's uh, <laughs> he makes a lot of this happen. The Zen him. Master. Yes, right. There you go. Jim, the Zen Master. Jim, thank you for everything you do for our show uh, and for everybody in the sales and marketing community, quite frankly. And um, be rerun next week. We'll join you again live on Thursday, January 5th, 2017. Wow. Live at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. we got a great set of guests coming up early year. So join us there. Thanks very much. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. We'll see you next time. Sales Pipeline Radio. You've been watching, listening to the only show that talks about sales pipelines, how to build them, how to grow them, how to keep them. With Matt Hines from Hines Marketing.